simpler. We're going to build on that on Monday and start teaching you Angular. Angular is built using jQuery. Everything Angular does underneath, it's using jQuery. So understanding jQuery is going to help you understand kind of how some of Angular is working under the scenes. There are also hooks into Angular for you to insert jQuery. So learning jQuery well will still help you do really fancy things with the UI. Angular is what we call a framework, though. It is not just a set of utility functions for you to use to help you. It is an opinionated structure that they expect you to follow. Both of these things, all the front end frameworks, work with the DOM. What is the DOM again? OK, that's what it stands for. What, what is it? <laughs> Put your notebook away. That's enough. It includes that. It includes that, but it's more. The DOM is the staging area where all the pieces come together. You write your HTML document, you write your CSS, you write your JavaScript, it's on the DOM that it figures out how all that works together. And you're going to see why that's important today with jQuery, because right now you just have HTML, CSS, really, right? It's like, great, I did HTML, CSS, it's rendered, it's done. But now we're going to start using jQuery to start changing what's going on in the HTML on the fly. But we're not modifying the file. We're not modifying the HTML. We are working with the DOM, the document object model, the model of the HTML document, the representation of what's actually happening on the screen. It's pretty important to recognize, I don't expect you to be necessarily DOM masters. If you really want to understand the DOM, go write some vanilla JavaScript stuff. Because <laughs> then you're like, you will literally say document dot find element by ID, get an element that way, and then start just manually manipulating what's going on. That's what gets tedious really quick. Uh, and that's how we used to have to write websites until jQuery came along. Until 2007, 2000, no, 2006. That's, websites were all written that way. And that is why when I graduated, I said, nope, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm going to go do C Sharp. Web does not sound fun to me. And I ran away. And then I came back in, it was 2011. Uh, the 2012 Angular has been out for like a year, and it was like, this is actually much better. I could actually stand to write an app using this stuff. So consider yourselves fortunate that you, you did not uh, come from a time. So if you hear anyone that's been doing JavaScript over 10 years, you know that for at least a year or however long before that, they were writing vanilla JavaScript web pages. And inside, you should just give them a very slow clap of admiration. <clears throat> All right, um, time to plug in. OK, I'm, I'm going to ask you to hold off on trying to follow along right for now.
I'm going to be deleting and changing a lot of things as we go. I will totally share what I make, and there's going to be two opportunities before the end of my speaking today where you can follow along to get some your own typing in, okay? Um, but I'd rather you pay attention because there's going to be a lot of concepts that I want to try to get through without waiting for people to stay caught up. So uh, we're on HTML page. There's a script tag where we're bringing in jQuery. First step to using jQuery or a third-party library. This is just going to bring JavaScript into your page. This is the first time where we're bringing in a third party, not our code. <laughs> Someone else's code that we want to use. So we bring that into the page, and then we will have access to it. The primary way that we interact with jQuery is through this character, a dollar sign. What jQuery does is it creates this as a global variable. They've called dibs on this. So please don't make a library that works with a dollar sign in the front. You'll just fight with jQuery. Pick something like a percentage sign. No, don't do percentage. That's mod. That won't work either. So we're going to do a dollar sign. But this dollar sign, even though it's a global variable, is a function. The first part that we're going to do with this is what is called the selector part. When I say selector, does that trigger anything? Yeah. CSS selector, right? Exact same concept. Pretty much anything you could do with a CSS selector, you can do right here. So if I wanted something, an element with the ID of app, I would do that. Div ID app. Var app element. What we've done, we just selected the app as a jQuery object. We can now do the second half, which is any manipulation or interaction with that element. So the two parts to any jQuery, the first part is you need to select or create something, and then you can interact with it. And when I say create, I mean create. Uh, var inner div, following this exact same structure, except for here, I'm going to write actual HTML. Div. VM10 is winning. So we have two things here. We selected an element with ID app, and the second one, we created an element. How does it know the difference? This character right here. Start with a caret, and it knows, well, you're making something, not selecting something. Now, if we want to use them together, we can start using some jQuery utility functions. In this case, the appropriate one to use is to take our app element and append our inner div. And you can see what happened over here. This is all the HTML that I have. But this is what's on the screen. This is what got rendered. This is the output. We are dynamically, on the fly, changing what's rendered. That is not what I was expecting. Uh, we put the inner div in. Yeah, I don't care about you. Um, So 
So as long as you're not repeating the exact same thing, and I actually know why that is, um, you'd keep adding things. We're going to dive, we'll dive more into a pen in a little bit. I'm just trying to show you, like, we're dynamically starting to manipulate what's going on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we have jQuery. We've got HTML that we can work with. And then we're starting to use JavaScript to manipulate what's going on in real time. Reasons why to do this? Someone clicked a button. They expect something to happen. We can now react to our data and to our users. Before that, it was static. Today is the day. I'm excited. You're going to start building some stuff. You're like, oh, OK, I can't believe we went from what we did yesterday to what we did today. Because instead of like solving JavaScript problems, we're going to make some neat stuff today that like does things. Uh, <clears> OK. <throat> Select or create. You with me? So let's go run through. I'm going to make another div here. Div. We'll give this one a class. Uh, we'll just call it one. And we're just going to go through some different utility functions that come with it. You, you get the selectors. Almost anything you can do in CSS, you can do right here. If you don't know CSS selectors very well, jQuery is going to seem a lot less powerful, and your code's going to be less efficient. So a good thing to do is to go review CSS selectors and pseudo selectors. Um, did you guys get fluke out? I'll share this one. This is a good CSS selector practice thing. It's fluke out. There's 26 levels, and they're just CSS selector challenges. So here we are supposed to, where's this one? Select the plates. How would I select the plates? It's not a class. It's a plate. It's an element. Now select the bento boxes. <laughs> bento. Now select the fancy plate. Awesome. You get the idea. OK. CSS selector practice. It will help you a ton writing more efficient jQuery selectors to do neat things. Yeah, it's just a utility function. We selected an element. And then we use this utility function to manipulate it or do something with it. Yes. Yes. So this JavaScript file is linked with this HTML. On JSBin, they have to do it a little weird because of how they make it work live. So you don't actually see like another JavaScript file. When you go write a real app, you're going to say script source my jQuery code.js, include on the index file, and now that JavaScript has access to the DOM of that index page. And then you still do your JavaScript file adaptions to jQuery like they're reacting to Because we brought jQuery in right here. Yep. jQuery creates a global variable that is a dollar sign for us to work with. This gives us back an object, a jQuery object, that wraps that HTML element and adds all these utility functions. So we do a selector here. We're selecting hash app, which gets us this div with the ID of app. 
it gives us back this jQuery gave us this object. And it's for that reason that we are going to have access to append, text, CSS, class, prepend, remove, a whole bunch of these that we're about to go through. Because we got it via jQuery. So var one element, how would I get this guy? Dollar sign? Dot one, we select by class. Great, we have our one element. Now we can do a few things. One dot text. Hey guys. Uh, one element. So this text function works two ways. We did the first way, which is as a setter. We set the value by passing one in. But if you invoke it without passing anything in, and we look at our console, it will get the value out for you. Yeah, I did an H3 here. Yeah, it, it just, all those do is normalize your styles and make them ugly. So that when you see ugly, you're like, oh, I didn't style that myself yet. You're not trusting the default. <laughs> that's, that's what reset is for. <clears throat> yep, all, all this works together. Everything we've taught you will work together. Text, set or get. All of these are going to have a very similar pattern where we can set or get. Set the text, get the text. OK. We'll do the next one. Text. Uh, let's do a pen. We'll call this two, and I'm going to make this a UL. Var two element dot two. We got it. Now we want to append to it. I'm going to go and again, once again, make something var list item. It's an li that is yay. I need to look at my cheat sheet real quick. Uh, let me make it again. I should be able to. Oh, we do. Um, and then, thank you. And then we can append as we saw to element dot append list item. We've appended to the list. Uh, I'm going to put some default things in here. Item uh, li item one and li item item two. Where did our insertion show up? At the bottom of any children. We had item one and item two and append. We'll put it underneath those items. We can then take to element dot prepend as a complement. And we're just going to do yay2. And where does it show up? 
at the top. So with those two, you can decide where you want it to show up. Do you want to show it after or before what's going on? Uh, CSS. I'm commenting this because I plan on sharing it. So hopefully that helps sort things. We can do more than just add things to the DOM. We can manipulate their CSS. Let's select our three element. Anyone want to guess how we would manipulate the CSS? Dot CSS. It's pretty intuitive on that one. What do you give it? Well, not quite as intuitive. You give it an object. A JavaScript object looks an awful lot like a CSS styling block. Key value, key value. So now we can go off of that. So key, background, value, red. Um, we need to put something inside of here. Pretty, any CSS property that you have access to, you can access here. There is one gotcha. And that is uh, anywhere that you would do this. <laughs> it did not work, did it? Because this in JavaScript, that's a minus sign. Right? <laughs> Background minus color. Uh, <laughs> cannot compute. So, it did minus the color, yes. So what we do instead is replace anywhere there would be a hyphen with a capital letter to designate the new word. And jQuery for you is doing this conversion to say go find all capital letters and when we go to apply it, actually go and add the hyphen and style it correctly. Yeah, drop the dash, capitalize the letter, whatever there would be a dash. So that's the one gotcha. Otherwise, you can get to any CSS property. Foreground, font colors, animation keyframes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. So let's do a condition. Let's say it's uh, red if var um, color is going to be equal to is awesome. If it's awesome, I haven't showed you ternaries yet, huh? Huh? Did we do ternaries? OK. You got to learn ternaries. Ternaries are important. Tangent. A ternary is a short form of an if-else statement. This is all it is. So if this condition is true, return red. If it's false, return blue. So we can say var is awesome is true, and now we're red. Bar is awesome is false. Oh, we're not actually using the color here yet. Color. Now we're blue. True. 
false. Ternary, T E R N A R Y. So this is this is a shortcut syntax for an if else statement. The question mark separates your condition. If we were to write this in if else, it would look like this. Color two. If is awesome. Then color two equals red. Else. Color two equals blue. This is doing the exact same thing as this, but this is much shorter. No. Ternary means three, the three properties. It's always set. You can nest them, though. And put a ternary inside a ternary inside a ternary inside a ternary. No. This is a JavaScript thing. Use this in any JavaScript, anywhere, if else. It's JavaScript for an if else. Huh? I've been holding back on you. Oh, man, how much time we got? Okay. <laughs> Do you think I'm... If we finish early, I'll show you another one. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm trying to get you the core of how things work underneath, and I'll show you the tricks as we go. <clears throat> but we're going to keep going. Before I show you more, we get another tangent. So, how you handle conditional stuff, you don't with jQuery, you do with JavaScript. Right? You, we use JavaScript to figure out what string do we want our background color to be, and then we put it in. Okay? Let's take this to the next level, H3, um, getting input. We've got an input box, class, the typer. Cool, not useful yet, right? We want to be able to get uh, getting input starts here. We want to be able to get the value that they type in to the box. So far, we've just kind of been manipulating some stuff. But it'd be really cool if we could get what they're giving us. So we're going to introduce a new concept. And that concept is events. That is the key word. Huge vocab word in the industry. An event means we're going to set up a listener that includes a trigger. We're going to say, when this happens, fire this function for us. We're going to react. We need to start, like always, by selecting var input box equals dollar sign quote, typer. We've got our input box. We're going to say input box dot on. This is how we tell jQuery, I'm listening for something. The first parameter we're giving it is what we're listening for, what to happen. We're listening for text change. Changed. These are the JavaScript events. Here's a few. These are the, some common ones on change, so I need to change my thing to change. Click, mouse over, mouse out, key down, load. I had another better list at some point that I'll go find. Someone go, when you call Fred or Jordan, go find me a list of good list of JavaScript events. Uh, oh, here we go. I got one. <laughs> Sorry. Here you go. These are all the different things you could list for to ha listen for to happen on a given element. You have a lot of control to know when something happens. 
You want to know when they click in the box? Great. You want to know when they move the mouse? Can do. You want to know when they click? Great. You want to know when they let go? Can do. You want to know when they hit tab? Can do. The list goes on. So this is on change. On change, call this function. The first parameter it gets is an event. And that just contains some meta information. We don't need it for this right now. Um, we're on it. So on this event, because we're doing like text change stuff, it's going to be a keyboard event. On that keyboard event, the main, this is the main reason you use this, there is a key code that it will give you. It will tell you which key they pressed. So you could use that key code, and we could say if, I, sure, let's do it. If ev.keycode is equal to 13, that is the enter key. How do I know? I've done this hundreds of times. <laughs> you know 13. So if they push the enter key, then we are going to take our three element, we're going to call CSS, and we're going to change the background color again to what they typed in. So now I can say var val, uh, user input value is our input box that we selected. This guy, dot val. Get the value out that they've typed in. And then we're going to use user input val right here. Purple. Uh, I have something completely broken. Oh, per. Not a valid color. Not getting the right one. Purple. Man, I am typo city right now. Yellow. Okay, let's. Uh, Console.log, ev.keycode. Uh, we need that back. We're, I've got my change event off. off. Doing click. Um, I think it is text change. Nope, text changed. Well, I need a console log. All right, I'll look at my own references. Change on change should be has change rate change on change console log jQuery text change Google US key I don't want to use dot change I want to use on. So they, they have some shortcut ones. I don't want to do that. Uh, jQuery on. I'm missing something stupid. I know it. On click. On submit. All right, I'm not going to waste your time. We're going to do it their way on change. Call this function. Yeah, it's not working either. It's undefined. Run ABC. I'm breaking. Whoa. <laughs> 
That's kind of what I wanted. I froze it. Come back. Lesson that you should be learning from this. You can still code nine years and still get a little lost sometimes. <laughs> I, I killed it. Go away, console. Maybe that will help. Okay. Save it while I can so we don't lose where we were at. All right. Um, no more guessing. Paste this in. Go to, I oh don't no, paste it in here. Wrong place. I'm going to debug it, figure out what I'm missing. Get our typer, which means we need an index. Input class equals typer. Input. Run it. OK, so I learned two things. Change is only firing when I hit Enter. I don't know why. I'm going to remember how to do text change in jQuery. So lesson two, you're going to do jQuery. You're going to learn it. It's going to be necessary, but starting Monday, a lot less. So I've, I haven't done jQuery since the last lesson. Like you, When you need it, you need it. It's good to have, but there's a reason we only teach it one day, and then we do eight days of Angular. All right, so we can get rid of this guy, because this is only going to fire on Enter. Yellow, there we go. Finally, that took way too long for that. The dramatic effect is just dead. <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> it was going to be awesome. <laughs> way past that. So let me recap what we did here, because that was quite a bit of like chaos for a minute while I got my head on straight. So we selected typer by class. We called it input box. We said input box, when your value changes, Get the value that they typed in. Get whatever they've typed in. Put it in this variable, and then change the CSS to use what they typed in. So I type in yellow, and it changes to yellow. I type in brown, and it changes to brown. I type in green, and it changes to green. Yep, dot .val is another one of these utility functions, just like dot .css, dot .append, dot .prepend, all of those. Um, yep. Don't know what that is. Lime green. You can do anything crazy you want now. You have power. You have unbelievable power now. Including writing an infinite loop that crashes the browser. <laughs> you, have, you will have the tools necessary. What it's going to take is practice and repetition to learn how to use those tools to achieve certain effects. But all we're doing here is a series of function calls that are either getting us values or giving us values. Getting values or taking values. 
Now you can use all the JavaScript skills we've taught you to start figuring out how do I get the value that I want to give it to get it to do what I want. So it's right here, three element dot CSS. We selected three element up here quite a while ago, sort of on a bar. So now we can use it wherever we want, anywhere in our code. So we use it right here and say your CSS now has a background color with this value. <coughs> Don't need to. No, because we're invoking the function and it takes it from there. We don't need closure in this case. It's not a tool that helps us. We're not, wor we're not worried about that. It's not returning anything. We are using jQuery right here and saying jQuery, CSS, apply these changes. And it goes and applies them, and we're done. Okay, um, let me look at my cheat sheet, see what else we need. Um, we'll cover that one later. Val, uh, we did Val, we've done text. So we need to do HTML, find, show, toggle class. HTML, find, show, toggle class. Okay, let's go select four, var four equals four. Four.html, again, can you be used two ways? We can get the HTML out. And we can set it. Anyone want to guess what we give this? HTML, span, um, no naps yet. And here we have our no naps yet appended to the bottom. HTML, find. Um, <clears throat> so there's a couple things underneath find. We have dot find. We also have dot child. Find, when we're building an HTML, you can keep going down as deep as you want, right? Like put this inside of this, inside of this, inside of this, and build this whole tree in the HTML. You can build this with jQuery. You can put this inside of this. Same way. You're working with the DOM, same structure. What find lets us do is start with a given element and then only look underneath that for something that matches our selector. Why would that be useful? It helps us be more specific. Why would that be good? We 
we can get to that. We could do it the other way just by adding a specific class and getting that one button that way. You're going to have a lot of code. It is not unheard of to have a DOM with 10,000 different nodes, 10,000 different lines stacked inside each other. That is not at all crazy. So we're talking performance here. Why search all 10,000 when you know it's in this 100 underneath this guy? Does that make sense? So it's a performance thing. So where possible, if you're like, no, I know it's underneath this one, it's not in the whole thing, start lower. Dot find will go all the way down, all the children and grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren, all the way down to try to find it. Dot child will look one level deep and then stop. It either finds it or it doesn't there. So it's even more performant to be able to use that where you can. Does that make sense? If not, we're going to show you. Either way. So, find div class uh, grandpa. Div class dad. And next to dad, we've got mom. Um, uh, div uh, UL class, children from first marriage. <laughs> this is a modern American family. And mom's got her children from the first marriage. L-I, you've got Davey, uh, and you've got Susie, and mom has, who's mom have? Mom has Beaver, <laughs> and uh, we don't remember her name, so we'll just call her Beaver's sister. Okay, so we've got some sort of like hierarchical structure. Let's select uh, var grandpa is going to equal dollar sign grandpa. It is dot grandpa. Dot grandpa. We've selected grandpa. If we do grandpa dot find, not typing that out again, children from first marriage, and let's do, let's see, var children is that guy. Uh, these are grandkids, right? Those are the grandkids. What am I going to get if I do this? I'm going to get this UL and this UL. Let's prove it. Grandkids.css, background, color, Yellow. Oh, why are you so stubborn? Oh, dot children from first marriage. There we go. We found both of those ULs and selected them. Made them yellow. So find, walk down, past dad into grandkid into dad's kids, children from the first marriage. What if we were to do the same thing using child? We'll call this grandkids two. I think it's children, now that I type it out. 
screen. And we'll comment this out just so it's not taking effect. It does not find children from the first marriage. It doesn't get it. When we say children, we start here. We look at immediate children. So dad and mom, and that's it. We go no deeper. Again, main reason to do this is performance. That's one. Two, what if we had a div inside of these? So now I've got grandpa who has children that's a div. It's got a UL with an LI with a div. I could change this to be any children that are a div and it's only going to get those ones and not walk all the way down and get subdivs. I only want divs just inside this guy. Don't go all the way down. So it gives you another level of control as well to impact only the layer that you want in this tree. Okay, one more cool trick. You can do what is called chaining with these. So if I don't want to do this var, I can do the selector, and then I can chain on what I wanted to do next. So instead of finding them, putting them in a variable, using the variable, and updating the CSS, I said, go get them, and as soon as you have them, change their CSS. It's just a shorter, sometimes cleaner way. When you, if you're going to only ever interact with an element one time, this is good or fine. If you're going to interact with an element two times, put it in a var. Yes. Yep. It's shorter, a little cleaner. But if you're going to, if I were going to interact with these divs more than once, I would always, I would always put them in a var. So I don't have to do the selector twice, because that becomes a mess, and it's much more easier to maintain. Don't repeat yourself. Get it one time and only ever one time. One more thing that I hope you noticed out of this is plural. It's really powerful with jQuery. This selector found two results. It actually was an array. But we were still able to call CSS, and it just worked on all of the results that we found. You don't have to worry about plural versus multiple in jQuery when you want to manipulate stuff. You do the selector, it will find anything that matches, whether it's one or many. You manipulate it, and it will update one or many. Okay. I'm not going to add something new so that we can do these last ones kind of quick, because they're short. And then uh, we're going to have you start following along with something else. So uh, let's just use four, which is no naps yet, four.hide. Four is gone. Four.show, it's back. So if you want to do like a toggle thing, you could use these. Um, hide and show. Last one, toggle, I should do a click event too. We'll do a click event. Toggle class. Anyone want to guess what that does? Toggle is a class. So this one, I do need to add something new. H3, toggle class. Um, div, um, words, class, um, and the div. Give it a class. 
uh, we'll call it big. Open our CSS, we'll add a dot big. That's going to make our font size be 48 px. Yep, that's pretty big. Toggle class var big equals select big. Big dot toggle class big. We turned it off. Turn it back on. We turn it off. Turn it back on. It's just a shortcut way for you to easily know, hey, that class was there. It's gone. If it's not there, add it in. Go back and forth. Uh, click. Um, let's do this. Uh, we have big already. Big dot on click. Call this function. This is using events again. When they click it, big dot toggle class. Big. You ready for this? I know. So we once again used events. Big on. When this happens, click. On big. Someone clicked on big. Read it backwards. Click on big. Call this function. What are we going to do inside the function? We're going to say big. Toggle your class big. We're just going to just change that class on or off. Um, if I can make this work. Select this guy right there. See it? Words, class big, class gone. Class big, right here. I click, class is gone. Cool. The power is real. Let's take a break before we go on. Gonna try to make a to-do list. You're gonna get hundreds of to-do list examples. The, inter the coding community has more or less ex decided that to-do list is a great way to kind of really explore something, but not too deep. So we have that. Then in our styles, 
you just have these two styles. We're going to change it so that when you hover over one of the list items, we get the hand showing you can click on this. And second, we're going to add a done style that's going to cross something out and color it gray. That's all we have there. We're not going to touch either of those two files. We're done with them. Everything else is going to be in todo.js. When you go to do real jQuery, you're going to want to start with this. Select the document. This is follow a long time, by the way. So select the document. And when it's ready, call this function. And then do any jQuery code inside of there. The browser just takes some setup time, and it is possible for your code to run before something is actually created and exists on the DOM. So you're like, oh, go get me the text box. And it's like, well, it doesn't exist yet, because your code was faster than the setup. So this just makes sure everything is there and exists, and your code will work. Step two, we're going to copy that code that I gave you inside of there and uncomment it. Someone explain what I'm doing on this top line that's highlighted. We are setting the var to do app equal to our jQuery to do app element. It is going to find this guy, id to do app. Someone describe what is happening in these other lines. Someone else. I'm trying to bounce around the room. Very close, yes. You're in the right ballpark, but I'm going to be a little picky. We're not setting them equal to HTML text. We are setting them equal to jQuery objects, new ones of those HTML texts. Right? So we already have a jQuery object around these, but we are creating. We are not selecting. Here we're selecting. Here we're creating. So where these don't exist on the page, Yet. OK, now take the second bit that I gave you, everything that says dot append. If you haven't already, paste that in and uncomment it. Someone explain to me what we're doing here. Someone else has not gone yet. Don't be that person that holds the class up. Speak up. Let's keep going. We are adding them not to the HTML file, but to the, to the DOM. Right? We're adding them to the HTML on the DOM. We're taking our to-do app that we selected, and we are pending a title, an input box, an add item button, a list, and a clear button. And now we have this. You should see the same thing if you run your index file or your live server or whatever you're doing. If it doesn't work, raise your hand so a mentor can come help. That's a lot of hands, mentors, please. That is a lot of hands. Index 9? Why is it index 9? Is that what you call it? Awesome. So 
Uh, this appending the elements in is really just for practice so you can kind of see what's going on. In a real app, those things are going to exist. I would declare them in the HTML and then select them so that my HTML is better describing my shape and my structure. But we're learning jQuery, so that's practice. All right, we did two and three, four. We're going to add an item click right here to add item. I should be able to type in text, click on the button, and it should add it to my list. I'm simply describing what we're going to do next. This is what we need to do next. OK? This does not work yet. I should, we should type, click, and it adds it to the list. OK? So first thing we need to do is what? Huh? Create an event on click. We're going to need to know when they clicked. How do I do that? Do I select the button? No, because we already have a reference to it. Right here. It's already on a bar. So we're just going to use it. Yeah, it's a sign of that variable. It doesn't matter that we appended it. It's still that same, same thing that's been added. One selector per thing. We already have a selector for that button, so we're going to use it. OK, now we've got the right element. What's next? Dot on, click. So when they click on the to do add item button, we want to do something. How do you do in JavaScript? A function. Call this function so that we can do. Great. Now we know when they've clicked on the button. What would be other things that we need to do? Grab the value. Perfect. So var user input. And then what? How do I get the value? No dollar sign. With to do input. That's our input box. Dot val. Invoke it. Sweet. We have the value. One more thing. We need to append it. Yeah, I don't have any more. So we're going to do what? To do item dot append. Nope. We're close. Nope. You append to a parent. You don't take the element you want to add in and append to it. You take the parent and add in what you want to append to. So we're going to use the to do list and append to it. What are we going to append? We need both. We need the to do item and the user input, right? Because we want to put the text inside. So how could we take this and put text inside of it? Text inside of it. 
dot text. The text is going to be user input. And now we can append, oh, not to-do list, to-do item. Sorry. Append it to that to-do item. Now we can append the to-do item. Save it. Let's test. I type in words. I click add and add it into our lists. Stuff. I click add. Oh. More. <laughs> We're really close. It's intentional so that you see and feel this. You cannot simply just reuse the same thing that you create. So what we actually need to do is take this selector, I'm going to delete that line so I don't use it, and create my to-do item every time they click add, we're going to recreate it. This function fires when they click add. So when they click add, we get the value they put in the box. We make a new, not to do input, to do item. We make a new to do item, add the text into the new one, and then append the new one. Save, words, stuff, to doing, so good. Such power. Anyone's not working? Raise your hand, please. So we can come help. Get you caught up. Two more things on this project, and then we're going to do another project. Yay. All right, so next step, I type in things I want to get done. I should be able to click on an item, and it should see that it's completed, right? I want to see the line through it. So, we need to, what are, what are things we would need to do? Ideas? Toggle class. Toggle class. We will use toggle class. On -click. We want to do an on click. Let's start there. Click on what? To do items inside here, we don't have access to it. To do lists. To do list dot on click. Call this function. Okay, I need to teach you something new for this next part. It's something that doesn't make a ton of sense until you see it like doing stuff. So we want to know what they clicked on. So to do that, we can say uh, clicked item equals dollar sign. J we're doing jQuery stuff, right? So where it gets a little different. We're going to pass in this. jQuery, when it fires any of these events, will set on the context, on the this keyword, the actual element that fired the event. 
So all we're doing is saying, take the element that fired the event and wrap it in jQuery so that we can do jQuery stuff with it. Pretty neat. Now you know why we taught you context before we moved on to this stuff. Imagine if we had taught you this, and you're like, what does this keyword do? I don't, I'm, no, break brains. So now we've got it. Now we're going to toggle class. Clicked item dot toggle class. What class are we toggling? It's already in our styles. Done. So as a quick gotcha in the index, mine is styles too because it's in a project with some other stuff. You need to make sure your CSS is pointing to your CSS file, whatever you called it. So go to your HTML, make sure you fix that link if you haven't yet. Otherwise, this step will not work. Stuff, words, yay. I click, does not work. Done, done. It does not work because we're missing one thing. And I don't blame you because I didn't show you this either. When you do a click event, you can do a sub selector as well. Because we created these two new items, you're going to be doing this a lot. This is the why. I'm going to start with the why. You're going to be adding things dynamically a lot. We are adding to do items that we do not have a reference for. We also do not want to have to continually go back and reselect them and reselect them and reselect them. So we can say to do list on click of an li element. It is mixing the click event with the find of the children. So find any children that are LIs when they are clicked, fire this event. And the main thing this is doing is changing the this pointer to be one specific LI item instead of the whole list. Without this, the this pointer was actually pointing to the whole UL list. I could go to my styles, add a class for done on UL, and it would have crossed out the whole thing. It's not what we want. We want one item crossed out. So I'll save. I click, and it crosses out and goes gray. Let's walk through it little by little so you can try to spot your own typo and then we'll do hands. To do list dot on parentheses click comma li comma function. Then we're going to put the clicked item in a var that is created by doing dollar sign and passing in this. And then say clicked item toggle class done. Because we say toggle class, so it knows to add it for us. There's no way, like, yes. There's no way to, like, toggle ID or other things like that. So just this is the class name. Okay, hands. If yours is still not working. Yes, it's a copy paste invalid character, but in the CSS this time. On line four, in between the two styles. Delete that line and make it look like this. And that will probably fix it. Never copy paste out of Slack again. Never. If yours is still not working after that, go ahead. Last thing we want to do on this project is get the remove all done button to work. How can we do that? We're going to use the to do clear button. 
dot on, click, call this function. What would be next? Huh? Uh, we're gonna. We want to remove them from the page. We're gonna want to use dot remove. What are we gonna dot remove? All of the list items. The ones with the done class. So how do we get the list items with the done class? We're gonna select li dot done. Select me any list item with the dot done class. And then remove it. That's it. Done, done, remove all done. They're gone. Deleted. Uh, no, but I should be consistent. They both work in JavaScript. Huh? That would be a, that's, so, black diamond on this is they be able to add items with the enter key instead of having to go to the add button and back. But you can do that on your own time. Okay, uh, you want to go to class.devmountain? Uh, not in there. Got to open here. So today we are introducing the first of many what we're calling mini projects. So you want to find the section called mini and open that up. It's going to take you to a repo that you need to fork and clone. Mini projects are going to take place at pretty, the end of pretty much every lecture that you have from now on. There's going to be text instructions for you to follow while I sit here and let you try it on your own. And then we do it as a class. So it is less guided by me. And it's kind of just to help ramp up from the giant mess of information we feed you in the lectures into being able to do it on your own. So fork and clone this. We're going to be recreating paint. Step one, set up my document, ready, so that way I, I know when everything is loaded and I can safely access it. Then we're going to select dot box and on click. We're going to select dot box and add a class. Is that good or more? Huh? Good? This is a little redundant. It does work though. <laughs> right? It does something. It doesn't right now. Look. I click on a box. We select all boxes and change them to white. 
That's where we can use the this keyword, which will set the context to the exact element they clicked on. Now when we click on something, we have just that one element that we changed to white. Okay, that's step one. Uh, if you were stuck with that, raise your hand so we can help you get caught up. Otherwise, continue on with step two. That's a black diamond item, and yeah, there totally is. I'm happy to help you like talk through the logic when we're done. We're once again selecting dot box. And adding an on. But this time, instead of listening for click, we're going to listen for double click. I plugged it in. I did not plug it in hard enough. 
I select the dot box, and on double click, instead of single click, we're going to call this function. We're going to do the same thing as we did before, except set the color back. We're going to remove the class white. Refresh, white, white, double click, and it's been reset. Over, mm -hmm. but the reset does not. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's that's an issue. If I go add mouse over events in a different file, I would imagine that makes. Mm -mm. So that comes from styling CSS. Oh, style.css. Uh huh. So you're gonna look for a cursor in here somewhere. Gotcha. Like a cursor class, or is that yeah, a, a property called cursor. Oh. Um. 